Well, if you're here, you like playing the color blue. And unfortunately, it seems that Bandai has done whatever they can to make sure blue is not a competitively, competitively, if I can talk right, viable option for at least in the first set. Uh, now that it has been quite a bit of time since the set has come out, we've had our time with these cards, with these decks, and as much as I think blue is, in my opinion, the most fun color to play, in comparison to the rest of the decks in the current meta, for the most part, blue is taking a backseat to a locals level, and um, I, I, I kind of hate that. So uh, let's talk about what we can do to make the deck better. Hey guys, welcome back to Phil Plays TCG. Today, like you saw in the beginning of the video, I want to talk about blue. Uh, what I think blue does good, what it does bad, and what it can do to be improved in the future. Because I really want to see each color be competitively viable. And right now, it seems like unless you're wanting to play uh, yellow, green, or even red now, uh, with red Beerus becoming a much bigger component in the uh, overall medicine, I think that blue is going to need some serious buffs. Now, what those are, let's talk about it. Let's figure out what's going on here. Uh, first and foremost, before we get into the video, though, typical YouTube stuff. If you could really, really take the time to just hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We are on our way to 1400 subs and we're just a couple away from the time of recording this video. And eventually we are trying to get to 2000 subs. The grind never stops here in the YouTube space. So if you like Dragon Ball Super content, especially, uh, specifically Fusion World content, you're in the right place. So check it out. I really appreciate any and all support you're willing to give. So with that out of the way, Let's talk about blue. We have here the three blue leaders for this set, which are uh, Blue Starter Vegeta, Trunks Future, and Goku Black. Now, of course, we are getting a fourth blue leader coming out in the next set, which is a fused Zamasu, which is kind of funny. It's a continuation of the uh, of this set being Trunks and Goku Black. Uh, of course, with the future Trunks saga, we're now getting the next boss in that saga, which was uh, fused Zamasu. Kind of interesting how it seems that a lot of the sets were just kind of a, uh, a continuation of uh, that character, but eh, that's just n neither here nor there. Let's talk about the uh, the leaders here. So there is, of course, discourse in the uh, community of blue players. We are strong. We are proud. Uh, we are talking about which of the blue leaders is the actual best blue leader. Um, which deck reigns supreme among these three. And honestly, all three of them have their benefits. And unfortunately, all three have their own flaws. Let's talk about them, shall we? And uh, let me know in the comments down below who is your favorite leader. And uh, let's figure out what we can do to make blue just a overall better deck, a better color in the future of this game. Uh, first, let's start off with Vegeta. I got some pros and I got some cons. Now, Vegeta's kind of weird because I haven't had as much time to play with him as I would like. I'm just kind of getting more of my information from play people that have played it more often. And I've uh, basically gathered this information talking with people and doing my own research. So, first and foremost, positive for this leader. Best blue leader against green is what a lot of people are saying. Right now, this leader has the ability of, if you have seven or fewer cards in hand, this card gets 15k power and that doesn't activate main ability. So being able to buff yourself to 35k to swing into the likes of Broly and Gohan is awesome because you swing into Gohan, they're gonna have to use their ability to buff themselves up to, uh, to 35k to match you, but then they're still gonna have to give you a card. Um, that is, of course, if they haven't already used their ability, Sorry, if they've already used their ability, they're going to have to give you more cards uh, to get out of it. And that's really, really good into green because green has some of the biggest bodies. Well, sorry, it, they have the biggest bodies in the game. So having a leader that can swing into these bigger bodies is really, really good, as well as getting past green's ridiculous defenses. So uh, I think this leader is really good into green. Uh, not, And he's going to be good into other colors, but I think if you're looking for a blue leader, to combat green specifically, this one's not bad. Uh, another positive is cheap swingers. Uh, cheap, big swingers. What that means is that a lot of cards in the typical Vegeta deck will have the ability, if you have seven or less cards in hand, this card gets a boost, like Kid Trunks, uh, Gohan, cards like that. So that's really, really awesome. 
being able to swing 25k, 35k, 35k with your leader and all these characters is very, uh, very powerful. And it puts your opponent into a very bad situation, having to drop a bunch of cards to get out of these attacks if they want to keep their life or keep whatever battle card you're swinging in. And it is a very simple strategy, is the final positive there. Simple strategy, stay under seven cards at hand. Easy enough, do a lot of math, make sure you're comboing out when you can to, to constantly stay under that seven card threshold on your turn for the most part. Defensively, there's a couple cards that benefit from you having seven or less cards. So once again, it's a very simple strategy. Hence why it's in the, it's the starter deck leader. Uh, the biggest benefit is low defense in hand. Because you are constantly having to stay under seven cards in hand for your uh, swings, being able to swing with Gohan, your leader, yada yada, you have less cards in hand for the crackback. Your opponent is going to swing in to try to kill you, and if you have less than seven cards in hand, depending on what cards you have, you might not have a whole lot of combo power, which could be bad if you need to protect certain cards or protect your life. So that's the biggest thing is, having seven or less cards in hand does give you a great benefit offensively, but defensively, it's less than desirable. So that's the biggest thing that I, uh, the, really the only downside to this Vegeta. Next, we have Goku Black. Uh, personally, one of my favorite leaders to play right now. Its benefits are crit on the front side. Now, a lot of times, well, during the uh, early stages of the reveals, people were like, oh, crit's awful, draw leaders are where it's at. Honestly, Goku Black is one of the few crit leaders that I actually really enjoy. I think all crit leaders, for the most part, are good. It just depends on the packages they're running in the deck to take advantage of that. So being able to press your opponent with crit swings that they either have to drop a 10k to get out of, or they're just going to lose a life to the discard pile is very good in my opinion. Amazing late game cards. Uh, sorry, Goku Black has an amazing late game with being have being able to play its six cost body for four, which allows you to then grab a card from your discard pile as long as it's uh, four or less. On swing, you could do play a four or less if you have seven or less cards in hand. So being able to build a big board for not as much energy is amazing and can really put your opponent in a bad place once you start swinging with real big bodies feels like you're playing green for the most part and once again kind of goes into that free big swingers late game with the six drop goku black's ability it's very very powerful if you see your pieces the negatives to this deck unfortunately are it's too archetype focused while with trunks and vegeta you can use cards that are generically good blue cards goku black is a exception to that where you have to fill the deck with lots of goku black and lots of zamasu cards to take advantage of its ability which is a pretty decent ability being able to place one zamasu from your battle area at the bottom of your deck during this turn the next time you play a goku black from your hand reduce the cost reduce the cost by two so like i said you could play your six cost goku black boss monster for four it's really, really good, but if you don't see your Goku Blacks, if you don't see your Zamasus, the deck stalls. And I have experienced this many times, where I have my Zamasus, I had plenty of Zamasu, but I couldn't find any of my 6-drop Goku Black leader. Uh, sorry, not my leader, my Goku Black leader, my 6-drop Goku Black boss monster. And I was unable to secure the win because I couldn't establish a big body to go on. I don't know what is wrong with my nose, it is real itchy i apologize and that leads into the inconsistency part of its ne uh, of the negatives which are it relies too heavily on seeing a goku black and a zamasu the problem is you really want to play your goku black on your four energy turn which would logically mean you play a zamasu on your turn three and you just bottom deck it on turn four to play your big boss monster problem is decks have way too many cards that are just great at removal. Red has the ability to minus things up to 20,000 power. So none of your Zamasu cards of the three that you're given have the ability to survive anything like that. A lot of the Zamasu cards are five costs up to 15K. So they are easily removable with green. Blue has great removal cards as well, being able to bottom deck cards or bounce cards back to hand. So you can't establish your Zamasu a turn early uh, if you're unless you're playing green. Green's the only one that can... You, it's, it's, sorry, not the only one. Green is the safest bet, but the problem is they also have cards like 4-drop Vegeta that can KO a 2-cost or less on your opponent's board. And since all Zamasus are 1-cost, they are easy targets for 
uh, your the, the Vegeta, as well as other colors. So it's almost impossible to play a Zamasu a turn early and feel safe that it's going to stay on the board. So you need to make sure you have multiple Zamasus. You can certainly try, but you need to have multiple Zamasus in hand in case that plan fails. And of course, if you don't see your Goku Blacks or on the vice versa, if you have plenty of Goku Blacks but don't see a Zamasu, then you're kind of shit out of luck. And that is the biggest problem in this deck is that it needs more consistency. It needs more targets and it needs the ability to protect your Zamasus so you can set up your big moves later on. So that's Goku Black in a nutshell. And of course, Trunks, who's been kind of like my bread and butter, probably my favorite leader to play in the game currently. Uh, you can see here, he's got a lot of positives. Uh, amazing ability, being able to bounce a three cost card back to the owner's hand, whether it's your opponent's or yours is fantastic. There's a lot of uh, on play ability cards you can use that you can just abuse the crap out of, like the one drop trunks, uh, the three drop bounce uh, 5k back to hand trunks. Uh, sorry, five cost card back to hand uh, with uh, trunks. It's it's a really good ability, and the fact that you can use it on both of your uh, on your cards and your opponents is amazing. Uh, tempo control is a big thing. Uh, I have learned in more. Re I have learned recently with the more time I've put into this leader that being able to bounce a card back to your opponent's hand, especially playing against red and yellow, it does disrupt their tempo where they are expecting a card to be there. Now it's not there, so you are able to just kind of control the flow of the game, your opponent's going to have to waste more energy to play, replay cards and you can just keep bouncing back to their hand. Uh, best recursion, in my opinion, because you have... The, we all know the blue has cards like the peel-off loop that can recur, peel-off, and whatnot. With this leader, I think you can take advantage of the recursion even better because you have the ability to play a peel-off, grab a peel-off from hand, use your leader ability to bounce this the first peel-off back to your hand so it's protected. Uh... You can take advantage. Uh, you can take advantage with the final hope slash, where you can play a peel off, grab a final. Sorry, or, or how about this? Play a peel off, grab another peel off from hand, S swing with the card, play final hope slash, grab that peel off back to hand, play peel off again to grab a final hope slash. Something along those lines. The recursion in in blue is awesome, but I feel like it's best in trunks. And then finally, best mid-range. I feel like with this trunks leader, you can go a couple different routes. You can go the advantage trunks where you awaken on turn one or two, or the control trunks, which I'm experimenting with right now. There's so many great builds you can do with trunks. It just, pen it just depends on your play style. So that's why I think he's the best mid-range deck for blue. But there is some arguments for Vegeta, I'm not gonna lie, but I still think trunks is the better pick of the two. Unfortunately, the negatives are pretty big. The deck is very big brain. You have to plan out every single usage of your energy because every energy you have is crucial. You have to think of like, what can I do with this? How many times can I recur this? Uh, you have to do a lot of, I feel like you have to do a lot more math with this leader playing into other decks. And a lot of people don't really like to do that. So it's gonna turn a lot of people off from playing the deck. And of course, I don't think this this deck has a great late game because you the the boss monster you're going to run typically in trunks is five drop Vegeta. Yes, you can make the uh, argument for Goku Black, but six energy is a lot to play in a single turn. At least with six energy, you could play the five drop Vegeta and still have an open energy to recur a peel off or have defensive card like Gallic Gun. I feel like. Vegeta is just the better boss monster for Trunks, but I am still testing Goku Black in Trunks, so that may change in the future. But I think the late game, a lot of the late game is just you playing card, swinging big, recurring another card, swinging, recurring a card. It's It, it can be a lot, and that kind of goes back into the big brain, too big brain uh, inconsistency with the deck. So... That is, at least, I'm going to say that, that's my piece with Trunks. So those, kind of a breakdown of the positives and negatives of each leader. Now, what can we do to change that? Uh, first and foremost, we'll just wrap this up one more time. Uh, Blue's, uh, Blue's uh, positives are the best recursion in the game. I feel like I've made that uh, argument. Uh, the boost for having my, less than seven cards in hand is really, really good. Bouncing cards feels great. Tempo control, all that stuff. Uh, then the negatives, of course. Bad late game. 
unless you're playing Goku Black and you can get your Goku Black cards out early, Blue doesn't have a great late game, and that, I feel like, is the reason why it costs them so many games. A negative to the having seven, uh, having seven or less cards at hand is that you do not have a lot of great defensive power in the deck. You have a lot of great offensive, but not so much great defensive. Uh, the bouncing cards is a great mechanic, but the negative, of course, is on play effects makes bouncing to hand hurt. Uh, if you can bounce a card to the bottom of the deck, wonderful. Your opponent's most likely never going to see that card again. But the problem is bouncing a card to hand is just going to make it worse because if a card has a great on play ability, they're just going to be able to use that again. Uh, unfortunately, red is a great example of that. Uh, green is a great example of that. The problem is, yeah, you don't want to bounce cards to hand. You really want to bounce them to the bottom of the deck. The only cards you want to bounce to hand are cards that don't have on play abilities. So which is kind of hard to do in this game. Uh, how to improve. I think overall, blue needs a better generic boss monster. Something that is is good. It needs to be... It's something like in between 5-drop uh, Vegeta and 6-drop Goku Black. Uh, it needs to be another 5-drop boss monster that has a decent enough ability that I think will help a, a blue player out in the late game. I think six for blue is too expensive. Blue doesn't, it's hard to get up to six energy in blue with a, with how the how crazy powerful some of the other colors are. I really think blue does better when it can use, when it can play multiple cards a turn and having a boss monster that's a six cost, I think is a little too much. Five cost, I think is the sweet spot there. Um, it also needs more cards that bounce cards to the bottom of the deck instead of bouncing to hand. Final Flash is a great, uh, choice sinister sickle the five drop vegeta being a bunch of four cost or less i think we need more cards like that yes are they going to cost a bit more absolutely but i think blue just needs options whether they want to build a deck that bounces things more to the uh, bottom of the deck yeah they're going to pay a little more but they're going to indefinitely get rid of that card or they pay a little less and bounce it to hand give us that option i think that we that a lot of people would lean more towards bottom decking but there are going to be some builds that would want to uh, bounce to hand so i think that is something that they should look at give us an option and of course better removal kind of goes into that we need cards that more cards at bottom deck instead of bouncing to hand or just letting us clear our opponent's board for like us paying a little extra to clear board or more bodies off board you know that's just my opinion uh, possible strategy, we have seen cards coming, uh, been revealed in the new set that have the same ability of look at the top three cards of your deck and arrange them in any order you like. The cards like Time Ring and Zuno. Zuno being a 5k blocker and Time Ring allowing us to look at the top three, organize them, put them back, and then draw one. Uh, I think that's a really awesome card, and it is a Batara target, which is really, really cool because we do have a one-drop searcher that searches for Batara targets. So maybe something in the, uh, more cards like this where it allows us to play out our future turns. Because imagine t playing a time ring, knowing the next three cards you're going to get. And if they're good cards, you can organize them in a way that is going to benefit you in the future. Uh, or if they're three bad cards, bottom deck them. Like, get them out of here. That's such a cool combo. And it reminds me heavily of... Uh, blue Doflamingo and One Piece, which is one of my favorite decks to play there. So if they do lean more into planning out your future turns, I think that'd be really cool. And finally, we have gotten a couple cards revealed that I think are going to help Blue out uh, quite a bit. Um, funny enough, they are both Zamasu cards in a way, which I think are going to be more so helpful to Goku Black. But in I think overall, they do have their place in other decks as well. So, let's talk about them real quick. Uh, we already gotten the two-drop Zamasu reveal that it's a two-drop 20k body, 5k combo. This card cannot be removed from the battle area by your opponent's skills. I think that's a great ability until you realize that Red's negging ability just says nah. I hate negging, car uh, negging attack power in this game because, it, to me, that's a skill. That makes sense. Like, it's a skill, that so it shouldn't be affected by this. But the fact is, that skill causes a in-game effect where the game's rules say if a card reaches zero it's gone so a skill so technically it is a skill but it technically it's the it's the rules of the game that removes the card so sorry little rant 
I just hate that negging gets around stuff like this. Uh, but its ability when attacking, discard one from your hand to draw one is really, really good in my opinion, because you can trash a card that's not needed or you trash a card that you know for a fact is, is procurable, trash it to draw something new. Uh, is good, I feel like, for both Go uh, Vegeta and Trunks. But in Goku Black, you now have a bigger target that allows you to possibly live longer against Red. Unfortunately, it's still going to be an issue against Green because Vegeta can still just destroy this card easily because he can KO at two costs or less. So, unfortunate, but it is still a it is still a good card overall. And then this new card that just got revealed, actually, uh, today, as the, of the day I'm recording this, uh, four drop, 25k Samasu with a five uh, 5k combo power when attacking if you have seven or fewer cards in your hand draw one i think that's awesome a card that allows you to draw cards is always going to be good but it's on uh when it's ko ability is the sweet spot uh play this card from your drop in rest mode on ko uh, when this card is ko'd and then you can't play zamasu fuse for the turn so a couple things from this first and foremost so if this card is KO'd from battle or by green's effect, this card will just come back in rest mode. And it's not a once per turn. So they cannot get rid of this card. I love it. I like that a lot. Uh, the fact that it says you can't play Fuse Zamasu for the turn makes me feel like there's cards... like it, my, This card would normally be KO'd on my opponent's turn. So why would it say that I can't play any more few Zamasu cards on my opponent's turn? Is the way I'm interpreting this. So does that mean that we're going to get cards that allow us to allow that we are allowed to be? If I can't talk, are we getting cards that can be played on our opponent's turn? And are they few Zamasu cards? Interesting. I think when I first read this card, I thought this card is absolutely cracked. And I still think this card is a really good addition to Blue's arsenal. I think Blue needed a card like this. The only problem is, once again, there is issues with the on KO. So one, bottom decking cards. This card being a four cost against Blue, it is an easy target for cards like Sinister Sickle, uh, Five Drop Vegeta, and Final Flash. Final Flash hitting a five cost or less is the, the biggest part. Um... The, the fact that this card can be easily removed off that if you're playing against another blue deck is really upsetting. This card needed to be a five cost, so at least the only option would have been a, few, uh, a final flash. Because, like, look at this. A two cost for 20k or a four cost for 25. I understand its, its abilities are really, really good, but I just think for that for, for that ability, I really think a five cost would have been better. But at the same time, I can understand why it's a four cost because you want to have more... Uh, energy left over. The other thing is that its ability is specifically on KO. What did we just talk about? Oops, I just hit the mic there. My apologies. What did we just talk about with the other Zamasu card? Red. Red negging power completely just negates the on KO because it's not being KO'd through battle or an ability. It's being KO'd, it's being removed due to the game rules. So, because of that, you play against red, they will minus this card off the board and it's done. It's not coming back. So, unfortunate, red and blue are not good, uh, not good colors to play this card into because they're just going to remove it very easily. But into cards like green and yellow, I think this card is really, really good. And I'm excited to see more. The fact that these are our two SRs, though, I don't know if we're getting a third SR. Maybe. Like, I'm trying to think now. How many SRs do we got? No, we got three. We got three in the last set. So we should be getting one more blue SR, which I more than likely is going to be a Vegito, which I'm very excited to see that. And I'll, of course, do a reveal and talk over the cards once we get them uh, revealed. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for the end of this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about the state of blue? What do you, you think of my thoughts for improving the color? Uh, what are your thoughts for improving the color? I would love to hear what you guys think. Uh, that's going to do it for this, guys. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Remember to hit like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I will see you on the next video. Take care, guys.